So, yes, I'm not in class today, but that does not mean you do not have a lecture. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Blitz, uh, which went from 1940 to 1941. It was a period uh, when Nazi Germany was bombing uh, England, basically trying to uh, capture all of the European continent. Um, so we're going to be talking about that. We're going to start off uh, by talking about the rise of the Nazis a little bit. Uh, and then for the rest of class, because I anticipate this only taking, you know, 20-ish minutes, uh, you're going to be watching uh, another portion of World War II from space that's on YouTube. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that. Please, please, be good for the substitute. Uh, if your name is left behind, you have five days of, si of silent lunch next week. So please, don't screw around. Don't cause problems, okay? It's just not worth it. All right, so let's get started. Uh, 1933, the Great Depression is going on, right? Uh, Germany is in a terrible situation. If you remember back to uh, the Treaty of Versailles that ended World War I, it punished Germany really harshly. So it said uh, you have to pay reparations, which you know is like you have to pay for the entire war. Um, so you have to pay for everything that was destroyed in Belgium and France and you know England and um, Italy eventually was on the Allies too at the end, and and so you have to pay for all that, uh, as well as you have to use that money to like you know eventually rebuild Germany. Uh, and the second thing was uh, the War Guilt Clause, right? So Germany had to take the blame for it, um, which was you know a, a real embarrassment for Germany. And uh, this is a time period called the Weimar Republic, um, and basically, you know, the government starts to collapse a little bit, uh, and people don't really respect. Uh, the government anymore. And, you know, things are really falling apart. There's, uh, you know, the fear of communism spreading to Germany. Uh, you know, there's, you know, obviously massive economic problems because the depression is going on. Um, but then uh, there's these voices that start to pop up. And one of them was Adolf Hitler. Uh, he created the National Socialist uh, Party, uh, which in German, if you, you know, spell out the letters for it, uh, is Nazi. Um, so he creates a Nazi party, in, uh, and, and by 1933, he's actually elected chancellor of Germany. Um, and that's one of the scariest lessons in history. You know, Adolf Hitler is elected. I mean, can you believe that? You know, somebody so dangerous uh, was elected. And I think part of the reason behind that uh, was in desperate times, you know, people will trust, uh, you know, leaders that they shouldn't. They, they do, you know, crazy things when they're desperate. Uh, and that, that's a perfect example. Uh, so Adolf Hitler rises to power. And, you know, during the 1930s, there's a lot of groups uh, that he, you know, starts to attack. Um, people with special needs, uh, Jews, uh, gypsies, uh, Africans that are living in Germany. Um, you know, anyone who is not the, this Aryan, um, you know, sort of race, this master race that he believes in. Now, Hitler is actually from Austria. Uh, but he, you know, speaks German and um, he rises up and, and he believes that, you know, the, the German race is the ideal race and that, you know, uh, you need to be, you know, blonde haired and blue eyed and, and those were the perfect people. Um, so he wanted to create a master race uh, and, you know, they started passing laws in Germany that were really harsh. Uh, they forced, you know, Jews uh, essentially to, you know, leave the country or live in these terrible ghettos. Um, and then as time went on and you got closer and closer to the, to the 40s, uh, they started tr uh, creating concentration camps, um, which people weren't sure uh, exactly what was going on at first. They thought it might have been labor camps, uh, something like that. Um, and it turns out that at these concentration camps, as we'll see uh, later on in this unit, uh, they, they were doing work. And then uh, oftentimes it was, you know, mass extermination. Um, so they, there, there was a labor portion to the camps, uh, but, you know, people were being systematically killed if you uh, could not do work. Um, and so, you know, during this entire, you know, period, uh, Hitler's responsible for, you know, six million Jews uh, dying in these concentration camps, and, and the Nazis are responsible for that. You know, the American uh, soldiers, when they, when they go over in 1945, they're completely shocked to find this stuff. They haven't heard rumors of it, really. Um, you know, the American government knew a little bit about it, but the average soldier didn't. Uh, so it was sort of a, a true shock to see, you know, how vicious uh, the Nazis could be and, and how they could mistreat people. Um, so it was very shocking. Um, 
1938, there was something called the Munich Conference. Uh, basically, France and Great Britain had gone to Germany, and Germany had started to expand. Uh, there's a German word, Lebensraum, which means like living space. Uh, and, and basically, Germany wanted to take back lands that they had lost during the, uh, the Treaty of Versailles after World War I. And so uh, Germany had taken back like the Sudetenland, which is the southern land. Uh, uh, they had taken back Czechoslovakia, and they started to extend towards Poland. And Hitler, in his book Mein Kampf, which is German for my struggle, uh, he basically states that the reasons for this are, you know, these people have German blood, uh, they speak German, they should be part of Germany. But that argument, you know, really doesn't hold up uh, when you stop to look at it. You know, Europe is, is such a melting pot that there's, you know, a, a heterogeneous population wherever you look. Um, so it, it really wasn't Germany's, uh, you know, right to have that land. But nobody stood up to him. You know, the tolerance for war was sort of left. Uh, you know, after after World War I, people didn't want to go back and fight. You know, they didn't want to send soldiers to go die. Um, you know, it was less than a generation away from that war. They didn't want to go do it again. So uh, Hitler is, you know, allowed to expand and allowed to become uh, a larger force. He starts rebuilding the German military and he starts, you know, expanding uh, Nazi Germany quite a bit, and this is a uh, a really big problem. It's known as appeasement, um, kind of like how a baby cries, and you can appease it by giving it a, a piece of candy or a pacifier or whatever. But then it's something else. You know, it's going to start crying for something else. And if you keep appeasing it, you're not solving the problem because the baby just gets everything that it, everything that it wants um, over and over. Uh, so it started to become a real problem as Germany was expanding. Uh, so. September 1st, 1939, Germany <laughs> decides to attack Poland. Now, Poland uh, was positioned awkwardly in between the Soviet Union and Germany. And so what they do is on September 1st, they go and they split Poland in half uh, and they take it over. There was a secret agreement signed by Hitler and uh, Joseph Stalin, who was the leader of the Soviet Union, uh, to do this. And, you know, there was resistance from the Polish people, but they were really surprised um, so within something like 16 days, uh, all of Poland had been captured. Uh, resistance still remained, and, and you can see some of this if you look up uh, like the uprising of 44 uh, in Poland in Warsaw. Um, but anyways, so Hitler starts expanding. He goes, uh, he attacks the French. Um, he basically starts ripping through Europe, and uh, he takes over like continental Europe. So Belgium, uh, France... Uh, you know, Poland, uh, these areas, um, and he, he's taken over this huge, huge chunk. Um, he's allied himself with the Soviet Union. You know, they have this, this agreement where they're not going to attack each other. It's called a non-aggression pact. Uh, and then you also have uh, Italy, who's led by a fascist leader named Benito Mussolini uh, to the south. Um, so he's an ally, and he's a member of the Axis. Uh, so Hitler uh, and Mussolini are allies. So... We're looking at this, and basically, uh, Hitler has captured all of Europe. Uh, the only exception is Spain, who's led by uh, Francisco Franco. They had just gone through a civil war, uh, 1936 to 1939. And, uh, you know, Francisco Franco was, was sort of friendly with Hitler, and so he left Spain out of World War II. Uh, and Hitler started to begin uh, a plan to take over uh, England. Now, there's two different things to it. Uh, officially, it's called like Operation Sea Lion, and there was a thought that they were going to, um, you know, invade uh, like an amphibious invasion of England. Then there's the plan to sort of bombard and weaken the British, and this is called the Battle of Britain. So from September of 1940 uh, into 1941, you know, Britain is bombarded. Uh, with bombs. You know, London experiences bombing uh, 56 out of 57 days at one point. Uh, it's absolutely brutal. And the German Luftwaffe and their air force, they're just going over and they're dropping bombs constantly. And I'll show you a bunch of pictures here. Um, but the devastation was just terrible. So they're destroying, uh, you know, civilians. They're attacking civilian centers. They're, um, they're basically dropping the bombs 
uh, and the cities catch fire because most of the cities are made, you know, with a lot of wood at this point. Uh, you know, that's just that that's because of the history of these cities. So, uh, every English city was, um, you know, at risk of being bombed. Uh, but without a doubt, London took the brunt of, uh, of the Battle of Britain. And so, you know, this is a time period called the Blitz. Uh, and the reason that it's called the Blitz is because of something uh, called Blitzkrieg, and that's German for lightning war. Uh, so, England is basically being bombarded. Uh, it's very, very bad. They uh, send children out to the countryside to try and survive. Um, people that are living in the cities, they hear air raids like this one. And then they uh, are forced to go down into either homemade bunkers, like you can see here, or they have to go uh, and get to a tube station. The tube is uh, essentially the subway. And so they would hide in these underground subway stations and try to wait out uh, the bombing periods. Now, what's interesting is the British, uh, you know, for the first week or so of the Blitz, uh, you know, the, these attacks were happening during the daytime, and they were able to fire anti-aircraft, um, you know, uh, ammunition at them and blow up some of these uh, these German planes. But the problem was uh, that the Germans caught on, and so they started to attack at night. How it works is, you know, the Germans plot a course, uh, you know, one bomber can start a fire, and that fire basically uh, guides all the other bombers, and so they can, you know, consistently bombard the city. Uh, so London really suffered uh, badly. Uh, at several points uh, in, in like December of, of 1940, Hitler actually tried to order the destruction of, uh, of landmarks, you know, and British uh, symbols uh, in order to suffer a psychological blow to the British. Uh, so that's sort of what you're looking at. Um, now, here's the thing. The United States is not involved, and this is American history, so we should talk about it. Uh, they, they thought of something called the Cash and Carry Act. Um, basically, Congress says, okay, Franklin Roosevelt, we understand that you are friends with Winston Churchill. He's, you know, the prime minister of Great Britain, and we want to help you, uh, you know, support the allies. Uh, and so they come up with something called Cash and Carry. And what Cash and Carry says is that the British can come over to uh, America and with cash, you know, not IOUs, not loans or anything like that, uh, they can buy, you know, um, ships for their Navy, destroyers, you know, firearms, uh, explosives, whatever you need to wage war against the Nazis. And it is our way of supporting the British and supporting the Allies without actually having to send troops over. Um, but eventually that became, you know, not good enough. Uh, we came up with something called the Lend-Lease Act because, you know, as the British ships would come to America and get their supplies and go back, German submarines called U-boats uh, would destroy those um, would destroy those ships, and then you know the British were losing you know, tons of supplies and tons of sailors uh, because of these German U-boats, and they were very hard to detect um, because radar was you know very primitive at that time, so. Uh, what's happening is we eventually came up with something called the Lend-Lease Act. Uh, you know, the British were running out of money and we said, okay, you know, whatever you need to do, uh, whatever you need to borrow, we'll give it to you. We'll produce it for you. Uh, and we'll, and we'll, we'll basically get paid back eventually. We're not exactly sure how. So, uh, we're sending this stuff over to Great Britain and it's, you know, helping a lot and they're able to actually survive, uh, the Battle of Britain and Operation Sea Lion, uh, becomes, you know, basically a failure. And Hitler makes the worst decision ever. He decides to try to invade Russia, which once Russia, you know, sort of figured out what was happening, uh, there wasn't much chance of that happening. You know, the Russians, you know, gave millions and millions of lives during this war. Somewhere around 20 million Russians uh, died during World War II. They really sacrificed, you know, way more than the United States, way more than France, way more than England. Uh, the Soviet Union uh, is largely responsible for the victory uh, of World War II for the Allies. But anyways, the United States extends Lend-Lease to the Soviets. So America becomes the factory for England. It becomes the factory for, um, 
France and uh, for the Soviet Union. So the Allies were just, you know, supplying them with tons and tons of goods. Uh, and, you know, somewhere during this point where we're supplying goods, we're attacked by uh, the Japanese on December 7th, 1941. Uh, the next day, uh, you know, Franklin Roosevelt goes to Congress and asks uh, Congress to, uh, you know, declare war on the Japanese. So we do. Four days later, Hitler, uh, because the Japanese and then Germany are allies, Hitler declares war on us. So now we do have a world war and the United States joins the allies. Uh, it's really unfortunate, though. We don't we don't actually get to go over to England uh and lead an invasion until 1944. So it seems like a long time. You know, the United States, our, our military had been dissolved nearly, uh, you know, during the 20s and 30s. Um, so we, we really, <laughs> we had a great military uh, during World War One, and then we let it all go away. Uh, so it really didn't work out for us. Um, eventually, though, we would lead an attack uh, that would be the invasion of Normandy on June 6th, 1944, sometimes called D-Day, uh, and we're going to be studying that later. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, you know, 16 minutes, not too bad. Uh, what I'm going to do is there's a link that will be underneath the link for this video. It'll be in the Google Classroom. It's going to be a link for the video uh, World War II from Space. We are watching it in class on Wednesday. And so uh, I'm going to give you this opportunity to watch another, you know, 30 minutes or so of it during class. Uh, please be good for the substitute. You know, don't cause any trouble. Uh, and hopefully your notes look uh, pretty good from this. Cool. All right. I'll see you guys Monday, maybe. Okay.